We return with Leslie Stump and his trusty steed, Rod the RV, on day 20. These few days are all about oily cars, tasty post offices, and a delicious celebratory bottle of white wine. Here we go. He wakes up, has breakfast, then heads out to crack open some juicy garages. Not much inside, junk and trash and rubbish. How did you end up in there? A jockey. Leslie has always distrusted jockeys for one reason or another. There are a few more zombies that Leslie has to deal with and then he stops for a little cigarette break doing the old 360 spin around turn to make sure no one's going to creep up on him. Ah, just a little cigarette Les. Another zombie conga line to deal with, then it's on to the large factory and warehouse next door. This place gave Leslie the heebies and he didn't want to spend too long there. It was very dark, smelled musty and was full of echoing moans of zombies that he couldn't see. As the sun sets beautifully on this industrial park, Leslie makes his way back to the RV for a cool down. Wowie. Okay. Okay, it's been a long couple of days. One more factory to loot. We're good to go. Slowly thin out the crowds. Slow and steady, Leslie. Slow and steady. On day 21, the weather turns nasty with a grey storm. Leslie is busy busying himself by slowly and sneakily taking out the crowds and he does a big sneeze. Yeah, I figured out, by the way, gang, you can muffle it. You can muffle a sneeze with a tissue, but it needs to be equipped as your secondary. Young Leslie here is enjoying the crowbar right now, and apparently he is incapable of sneezing into a tissue while holding the crowbar. You can see the chaos the sneeze caused here. <coughs> ah, the sneeze. Very loud sneeze. He dispatches the zombies that are attracted by his dribbly nose, then it's into another spooky factory. Leslie does not like the cold interior spaces, the gloomy dark. He wants nothing but the fresh open road, so he leaves. This place is unsettling. I would like to leave, I think. Leslie is not enjoying his time in the factory. It's dark, it's spooky. I think I should just leave. Let's get out of here. Should we check out one or two of these cabins? I won't load them all because there's probably not much there, but poke our head in, see what the zombie count's like. He decides to check out the caravan park and stumbles across all kinds of debauchery, including the fairly rare Hotties magazine that Leslie will save for a lonely day with Mrs. Badger in the back of Rod the RV. We'll read that later, won't we, Leslie? Let's have a snack. Six o'clock, so we can probably spend the night here. One last day. Let's cook something up. Um, ketchup and rice. Ketchup rice. Delicious. Wowie, Leslie, good job, buddy. Been through a lot, I know. Keep on keeping on. On day 22, it's time to hit the junkyard. Where else to become a junk rat vehicle modifying badass than Riverside's very own junkyard? First, he needs to clear out a few zombies, and he stumbles across a fellow survivor. Well, ex-survivor. The dead zombie has some treats for him. Wow. Eat a cheese sandwich, thank you for this blessing. Rest in peace. Is it a crime to steal a dead man's sandwich, to suck on a dead man's butter stick, to wear his clothes? Leslie does not think so. He pulls into the junkyard which will become his home for a few days, to live like Stick of the Dump, a hairy man who loves to rummage through trash. It appears the dead zombie he killed was a bounty hunter from 1880, the weird world of Project Zomboid. Leslie shrugs it off. He'll save those pictures underneath his pillow. Leslie begins his work in the junkyard in a terrible manner. He smashes a window with his elbow and cuts himself. Genius stuff, Les. Genius. You idiot, Leslie. You fool. Got your arm on that car. Then, to make matters even better, Leslie realises he doesn't have a jack, meaning any tyre maintenance, brake changing, or anything else wheel-related isn't going to be possible. Do I not have a jack? How do I not have a jack? It's here that Leslie also comes to the realization that he's missing the Intermediate Mechanics magazine, which will allow him to do work on heavy duty vehicles. Considering Rod the RV is certainly heavy duty, that magazine is gonna be crucial. So begins the epic quest to find that magazine, which might just take us the rest of the 100 days. Ah, so I can uninstall from standards 
because I know the recipe, but I don't have the high enough um, thing, so I can use my wrench to uninstall that stuff. Good job, Leslie, using your brain. Leslie is mumbling to himself, going slightly mad in the red hot blazing white heat of the junkyard and all that bubbling metal. He takes out some madness and anger on nearby zombies with his poking stick, poke poke. The rest of day 22 and the vast majority of day 23, Leslie spends heads down underneath car bonnets tinkering and twiddling with bits of hot metal. It's hot, stuffy work. At the end of day 23, he settles down in the cool RV to listen to the warming tones of a cooking VHS. Leslie toys with the idea of reading hotties, but he reckons he should save it for a more pressing, pressing, pressing situation. On day 24, just for a small change of pace, Leslie ventures just gently into Riverside, gives it a little peck on the cheek by visiting the bar and acquiring some delicious beer and liquor. A beer. Oh, yeah. On day 25, he ventures just a little further into Riverside, a proper spooch, looting a little shop and checking out the useless shitty little police station that had absolutely nothing of use inside. His main goal of all this roaming is to get to the VHS shop for some more sweet voices for the empty spaces in his head. He wants to sit in the TV's light and soak it all up. Step by step, I could go to the VHS shop right now, but I've died too many times like that before, so I'm just going to walk back to the van. He sleeps until 12 o'clock the next day, day 26. Fair enough, it was a big old day yesterday. Then continues to try and level up his mechanic skill. It's an arduous process, though he finds comfort in the grease and oil of these mouldy old engines. A few zombies turn up that he has to deal with, then it's back to the RV for a bit of light reading before bed. This time with the light on. On day 27, I'm not kidding you, absolutely nothing happened. I didn't even speak in the recording for about 30 minutes. Just Leslie and his cars. Complete silence. The man finds comfort in the manual toil. His hands are already crusty and worn. On day 28, because the junkyard is beginning to feel like a prison, Leslie jumps into the RV and drives straight into the middle of town. He has a habit of doing this. Just as he's reversing, the expected finally happens. First crash of the goddamn season there, series. Check it out the post office for some post. No, just kidding, for the magazines and books. The post office storeroom has a bunch of stuff in it. Some useful, some useless, but no intermediate mechanics magazine. So he heads on down the riverside to see what other treasures this little town holds. There is nothing in this town. Nada, niente. Just a bunch of shambling riverside folk who he has to lead up the main road and out of town. The stench in the air is absolutely disgusting. It smells like someone had turned the entire town into porridge and then left it on the side for three hot summer months. Did I leave my cooking pot on the floor? After leading the zombies out of town, he returns to the RV and realises that he has left his cooking pot on the floor in the junkyard. He was using it to collect rainwater. Thankfully, he still has the means to make a delicious meal. White wine and canned corned beef pasta with ketchup. What a way to celebrate one month being alive. Truly incredible. The longest any single one of my characters has survived. Leslie, goddamn stump. What a legend. You might realise here that we're apparently missing two days of Leslie's life. This is my first time doing this and I must have miscounted. Maths is not my strong point and neither is it Leslie's. Oh well, here is Leslie's one month celebration. He kisses those two sweet missing days goodbye, sits down on a deck, 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 deck chair, sort of, not really, and watches the river flow calmly by. He also drinks an entire bottle of white wine because goddamn he has earned it. He is my longest living character at this point and I have grown extremely fond of him. Sweet, sweet Leslie Stump. Little bit drunk. Little bit happy. Leslie Stump. I survived. An entire month. All with the help of his trusty RV, of course. Survived for one month. Well done, Leslie. 